Today I'm going to show you how to build a full-fledged static site generator with just 100 lines of PHP. Our goal is going to be to read content files in some format, process them with a templating engine, and then produce static HTML files in a directory tree of our choosing. The first thing we need to do is create our main class file, ssg.php and add in some boilerplate, an initial method that'll be called at the end of the file. And we can run that, test it out, and see that it does return what we need it to. We'll just add the end of line item at the end of the string, that way we don't get that weird percentage. All right, so what, what do we need to do in this method, in this process? We need to get all the content files, and then for each of the content files, we need to pass the information in those to the template. We're going to be getting back HTML from that template, and then we need to write that to a file in the structure in our output directory. That way, whenever the output directory is used as a web route, the user can navigate through the folder structure of the site in a nice, clean way. Okay, our content directory is going to be housed in the site root under content, and each of those files will need to be found. I like this one line right here that uses array diff and scander to grab all the files inside of a folder, except for the dot files that we don't want. For each of these files, we need to get the content out of them. And the first thing we need to do is decide what format that content should be in. There are static site generators that use plain text files. Markdown is a very common format, uh, even blocks of raw HTML. For this one, I'm going to stick with JSON files. And so I'm going to create two test JSON files, the first one being index.json under the content directory, and this is going to store all of the information for our landing page. Uh, we have a title and a subtitle attribute. And an items array that contains three objects with a name and URL attribute each. For the about me JSON file, it's just going to be the title and subtitle. Back in our for each loop, I'm going to grab the data by using file get contents and then decoding that without the associative Boolean so we get it back in an object format. Once we have that data, we need to pass it to a templating engine. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I like working with Laravel's Blade template. I work with Laravel in a almost daily instance, and I like using Blade. And luckily, there is a simple composer package by Philo, or Philo, that'll allow us to use Laravel's Blade templates in our PHP project. Back on our class file, we need to add in the require vendor autoload for composer at the very top. And then we're going to use the philo slash blade slash blade namespace so that way we can easily use it as just blade. Back in our for each loop, 
we're going to create a new blade instance that requires two parameters, a views directory where all your Laravel blade views are stored and a cache directory to hold the cache files. Both of these I'm going to create just in the root of the project. The cache directory though needs to be completely open. So I'm going to chmod that to 777. Finally, we can send all this to the templating engine by chaining together a few methods. We can call blade view make, which requires two parameters. The first being the view that we want to pass all this information to. I'm going to just use default for this entire project. The second parameter needs to be the data that you want passed to this view. I'm going to grab everything that was in our JSON file and I'm going to pass it in using get object vars, which is going to take all of those properties in the JSON file and convert them into individual variables passed through to our template. The final call to the render method will convert all of that to HTML and return it to our content variable. Let's create our simple default blade template. And add in some boilerplate HTML so that we can see our variables returned. And now that we are getting back HTML, we have to save it to the correct path. We have to determine what the correct structure should be. The landing page should just be index.html in our output folder, but each subsequent page should be saved as a name and then index.html. So that way when the user is navigating through the site, if they decide to go to a URL called slash blog, the folder structure should contain a blog folder with a single index.html file inside of it. So that way, slash blog loads up the file that we're expecting and we have a clean URL. In order to get that file structure, we could read the file names on each of the JSON files and then create the structure accordingly. I prefer to add in the slug attribute here that allow us to modify the slug to fit whatever we want it to fit. Now our output directory is going to be a disk folder in the root of our project combined with the slug attribute that we had added in our JSON files. Now if that's not a directory, we need to make it. We're going to use makedir with the directory 755 as a permissions and true on the recursive boolean. That way, if we had a slug that was slash blog slash this interesting post, it would create a slash blog slash this interesting post directory, even if that parent blog directory wasn't created yet. And our output path is just the output directory with index.html tacked onto the end of it. Then we'll use file put contents to add that HTML into our new index file. And we'll echo out a little information to the user so they know it worked right. In our terminal running php ssg.php, you see that it built two pages, an about me page and the main index page. And there we have a functioning static site generator in PHP using Laravel Blade and some JSON. Now let's clean up these comments a little bit and add them into their appropriate places. In the second part of this video, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and separate out some functionality into their own individual methods, as well as show some caveats about running this as it is, and display some more useful information to the user as it runs.